everything. So let's check out the instructions. Okay. Oh, and the color is going to be a little bit more. I think you'll find these tools to be positively invaluable as you endeavor to help home solve these cases. Choose an icon to hear a description. Okay. <laughs> Um, yeah, the color is going to be a little bit wonky. That's just because the signal off of uh, the Genesis and Sega CD uh, doesn't like to be split, and so we lose some of the blue, which makes everything terrible. So, um, I apologize for that. I don't think it's going to be a big deal uh, for the purposes of, of this game. That's why the blues are kind of purple. Okay, this is the door. <laughs> Choose this horse and carriage after you have chosen your destination from either your notebook or the directory. It will take you where you want to go. Okay. Horse and carriage. So, apparently after we have uh, selected a destination, we go there. This is a, I don't know what this might be, a gavel. When you believe you have directed Holmes to all of the right and proper places, and you have enough information to name the murderer and the motive, choose this icon. Okay, so that's... I guess we go there when we, when we want to solve a case. The Baker Street Irregulars are an untidy bunch of young street boys who happen to be on the proper side of the law. They have an undeniable knack for bringing back priceless bits of information in a fraction of the time it would take Holmes or myself. When you want to summons them, first choose the destination from your notebook or the directory, then choose the irregulars. In no time at all, they will return with whatever details they were able to unearth. Okay, so I'm guessing that this is the notebook and directory down here that have been referenced a couple times. Choosing this icon puts a notebook at your fingertips. I believe you'll find that your notebook is your greatest detective tool. Use it to keep track of names and places that you believe you might want to investigate. When you do decide upon a person to question or a place to research, first go to your notebook, choose the appropriate name, then choose the horse and carriage. You will be off and running. Because the Baker Street regulars are often critical to solving a case, I've included them in your notebook. Use them wisely. Okay. This is the directory. This gives you access to the London Directory. In it, you will find everyone you need to query in your attempt to solve these cases. The directory is also the source for your notebook. You may also use the directory much like your notebook. First, choose your intended destination, then choose the horse and carriage, and you'll have another way to get from one place to the next. <laughs> okay, what is this? Mr. Holmes' files provide a wealth of information that he has been collecting over the years. Some of it is quite pertinent to the various cases, and some of it offers simply a fascinating and informative sidelight. When you want to access the files, first choose the destination from your notebook or the directory, then choose here when you want to see what relevant information Holmes might already have at hand. And then the times. Body found in the Thames, read it in the Times. Holmes has always claimed that the newspaper is a treasure of information when one can read between the lines. When you are ready to consult the Times, you may of course have a look at your paper copy or simply choose here for a close-up view. Oh, paper copy. We actually have a copy of the Times here. Oh my god, this is so sick. This is so sick. Oh yeah, uh, that does sound like a, a 50s shopping network uh, music. Dude, Stevie, do you see that that this game comes with a little mini newspaper? Um, I, I want to put a, a picture of this on my Facebook post uh, as I'm trying to, to lure people into uh, to participate in this. Uh, we're taking a little bit of time right now, Stevie, at the beginning to, to learn the rules of the, uh, the game and how to play it. My god, that's pretty freaking cool. 
Um, I think it might be easier to read it on the on the newspaper than on the game screen. Um, nope, 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 nope. Okay, and then does this thing do anything? Or is that just... That's just decoration. Okay. I I am definitely going to be uh, arriving at, at false conclusions. I'm pretty sure. Okay, so I don't really know yet <laughs> at all what we're doing, but uh, that was the instructions page. This is the Holmes introduction, so... Yeah, Stevie, I, I've, I discussed it earlier. The uh, um, It all has to do with the video output from the Sega Genesis. The blue gets a little bit lost uh, when uh, on the output. I don't know why. I've tried going just directly into the... Uh, the video converter without splitting it to the TV. So I don't think it's a... It's a matter of the signal getting split it just uh there's just nothing i can do about it once it gets into the computer everything is just screwed up so i've adjusted the color as much as i can to try to get uh at least all the colors to be uh to be present in some way but it's taken kind of elevating others to bring out the blue at all um, otherwise it looks black and white so trust me i, I spent 20 minutes fussing with the color and this is as good as it's going to get. So, yeah, it's, it's probably Christo's fault. London is not a beautiful city. Under the soot that covers its buildings is a teeming mass of four million souls trying to survive, mostly off of each other. You see it in the paper every day. Thankfully, we have the London Times to keep us informed of all these troubling activities with an unbiased eye and razor-sharp <coughs> accuracy. We find this publication to be of invaluable assistance in our investigations, and I'm sure you will as well. Among the forces of evil which run rampant in this city, there are also, thankfully, two groups of individuals who will aid us in our cause. As we do, they attempt to right wrongs and restore harmony and civility to the streets of London. The first of these groups is a ragtag association of young ruffians. I call them the Baker Street Irregulars. Don't let them fool you. They may be scruffy and deal bread, but they are on the right side of the law. They can go everywhere, see everything, and overhear everyone. They are my eyes and ears in the streets of London, unquestionably a tremendous asset in our work. They will help us in our investigations if they can. The other group is a far more civilized collection of gentlemen than institutions. I call them the Baker Street Regulars. They, too, will be extremely useful in our work. At the start of any investigation, do keep in mind that it is a capital mistake to theorize before one has data. Unwittingly, one begins to twist facts to suit theories instead of theories to suit facts. The people and places to whom I will now introduce you will help us to collect the facts. May we use them wisely. Come, the game's a foot. Uh, Snake and Crane, this is, uh, this is Sega CD. Uh, we're playing it through the Pioneer Laser Active, but yeah, it's a, it's an FMV game. So, the... <laughs> I like how, how, how Holmes thought he was very clever uh, naming the regulars and irregulars. Uh. <laughs> oh, God, what's all this? Where, where are we now? 
I don't know why the menu took me. Mr. Henry Ellis is the foreign news editor for the London Times. He is a great reservoir of information of what's happening on the continent. He also has an interest in crime news. Ellis is always happy to help when he can, but you must be careful of what you tell him, or you might find what you've confided to him in the next day's times. Uh, is everyone able to hear the uh, the audio from the, the the Sega CD? I'm definitely going to just let it play and, and not talk over Holmes, because I want us all to get the same information. Uh... Okay, so this is Hall. Hall looks like he's a, a, a justice. Edward Hall is a young barrister whom you will find on most days at the Old Bailey. He's a cut above the other unimaginative members of his profession. Holmes, don't you think you should explain to them the difference between a barrister and a solicitor? Yes, of course, Watson. A solicitor handles the routine legal business of our society. If you do not have to go before a court, you will have no need for a barrister. If you must go before a court, then your solicitor would engage the services of a barrister. Okay, so we're getting a little bit of uh, instruction on the, on, on the legal system in uh, Britain. That's great. Quentin Hogg is a crime reporter for the Police Gazette. He is an ex-police inspector who found the environment of Scotland Yard less than stimulating. He has a strong deductive mind and is a very good resource. Hog? Wait, okay, so... I don't, I don't know if we're going to need... I guess we can check this at any point, so we don't need to, to make notes on that. Uh... Sir Jasper is the chief medical examiner for St. Bartholomew's Hospital. He is London's greatest forensic pathologist. You can depend on him for all the technical details that can be obtained from any corpse whose cause of death is in question. Okay. Oh, Jay Pullman, what's up, man? Uh, so we're just now getting uh, an introduction to the people inside... Uh, Holmes' network of, of uh, uh, friends and acquaintances. And uh, so every time we click on one of these, we get a little bit of a profile. This gentleman is the head chemist at Scotland Yard Criminology Laboratory. It is rumored that Murray lives in the lab. He is eternally bent over one of his tables trying to extract the history of a crime from the physical evidence he's been given. You can learn much from old HR if you can follow the twists and jumps of his thinking. Okay. And uh, uh, and since you weren't here for the apology, apologies for the color, uh, it's just a, a function of the, the, the Sega CD having bad video output, and uh, so the, the color's a bit funky. I don't think it's going to matter. Head clerk Disraeli O'Brien is your contact in the Office of Records. The Office of Records contains legal records, both criminal and civil, as well as state papers. I think you'll find O'Brien to be a walking, or should I say, sitting encyclopedia of the office's affairs. I like that you used the, the very point of uh, Holmes's uh, pipe to click on stuff. Porky is not a pillar of society, I dare say, but he is a man who has learned from his mistakes and is trying to start a new life. Although he is no longer in prison, he is still behind bars, or shall I say, a bar. <laughs> Jolly good one, Holmes. Yes, Watson. Well, the bar in question is the Raven and Rat Inn. The Porky is the proprietor. He has been of great help to us in the past, and I expect he will continue to be in the future. Yeah, I, I swear I've seen this guy uh, brewing at a uh, at SF Beer Week. If I can't find something in my own files, I go and examine the overflowing shelves of the Great London Library. It is a wealth of information. Okay. This is a records office housing documents pertaining to births, marriages, deaths, and last wills and testaments. All right, and then this is going to take us back to the menu. So I think we've got a we've got a little bit of introduction on everything. We know uh, how to use the 
the menus. Uh, we got an introduction from Holmes where he explains the difference between the, uh, was it the Baker Street regulars and the irregulars. So there's two different ways of gathering information uh, through, I guess, some ill-bred youths that'll, that'll run around town and, and, and give you rumors. And then the, the more traditional channels of, uh, you know, speaking to the well-to-do people in, in London. I guess we're just going to go ahead and uh, open up a mystery. This looks like uh, the two lions. I dare say, Holmes, I believe someone has left a note upon our door. Dear Mr. Holmes, please check today's times. I think you will find something of interest. Signed, a friend. Okay. Uh, well, what's the date on that? Is that is that really all? Oh, okay. So let's go here, I guess, because I'm not really familiar with this menu. Oh, what? I dare say, Holmes, I believe someone has left a note upon our door. Dear Mr. Holmes, please check today's times. I think you will find something of interest. Signed, a friend. So that says August 17th. Okay. Lions murdered in Hyde Park. Okay. So I wonder... How do we use this menu then? Okay. So here's our case log. I'm going to go ahead and read this to you. Uh, the Two Lions, uh, 17th of August, 1888. It seemed a play on words. Lions in lions with a Y. But the deaths of these two were definitely no game. What was the motive behind their killings? Were the murders simply routine? Or were they a symbolic act of retaliation against British rule? Okay. So... Let's click on this. It's our notebook. Should we just start talking to everyone? Is there any reason not to talk to everyone? Oh, 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 okay, so I remember. So you go here. You click on somebody, and then you go to them. Mr. Ellis has not yet returned from his assignment in Europe. Well, it looks as if he'll be of no help to us on this case. <laughs> well, I'm glad we watched that. <laughs> okay, so here's what I can tell you from the Times. Uh, lions murdered in Hyde Park. Two lions, both male, were found shot to death in Hyde Park. In the early hours of this morning, uh, neither the constable who discovered the macabre site nor the inspectors of Scotland Yard admit to any clues as to the perpetrator or motive of this bizarre affair. So, that's... Okay, uh, that's the basics so far. Uh, let's talk to Edward Hall. The victim, Stephen Lyons, was last seen in the company of Sylvia Carpenter, Marcy Edwards, and Collier Eddy at the Red Bull Inn. It was a simple matter for the police to identify and apprehend them. Would you like to talk to them? Yes, thank you. Tell me, Miss Carpenter, what happened last evening? He just dropped down dead. He did. I done nothing to him. I swear it. Miss Carpenter, did you know the gentleman? Never seen him before. 
Marcy, me and Coya was just sitting around talking about this and that, and the sailor comes up and he says he'd like to join us. So we started off to Marcy's place. We only got a few steps and the sailor starts gasping for air. He made an awful sound and then he just killed over dead. I took off like a shot. Did you notify the authorities? No. Why should I? And then he just dropped over, dead as a doornail. <laughs> That's precisely the story Miss Carpenter told us. Well, then that proves that it's the truth. Looks like the cop has got the wrong girl. But that ain't unusual, is it? I understand the man was robbed. Well, the man was dead. What use did he have a few quid? Dead or not, it's still stealing, my good woman. I was out for a little fun, is all. Never seen the bloke before, and I had no cause to arm him. The police seem to think that his money and gold earring might have been cause enough. Oh, I took the opportunity as it came, is all. But I didn't murder him for it. <laughs> uh, some of these people uh, haven't worked very hard on their accents. <laughs> Uh, DDR Master Dude, this is Sherlock Holmes Consulting Detective Volume 2. Um, so if anyone has any ideas besides just going straight down this list and listening to everyone, uh, I kind of I kind of don't know where to begin. Uh, where I mean, we're just we're just trying to gather up some information. You do appear to be up to your eyebrows in something, Hogg. It's the jewel robberies here and on the continent. Ah, yes, the Society Burglars and the Oldenburg Jewels. I've been reading about it in the Times. The cases are quite similar in several respects. The one baffled at how the thief or thieves have managed to escape detection. I agree, it is a mystery. <sighs> so, what brings you here, Watson? Holmes and I received a strange note instructing us to check today's Times. We discovered two items of interest, the murder of Lyons in Hyde Park and the mysterious death of a Stephen Lyons. Interesting coincidence, don't you think? Oh, it is. I do wish I could help you, but I haven't kept up with the latest since I buried myself in this jewelry business. Um, so I don't see in the, uh, the Times today Stephen Lyons. Oh, hold on. Uh, let me read you an article from the the Times, Friday, uh, August seventeenth, eighteen eighty eight. Mysterious death. Shortly after nine o'clock this morning, the body of Stephen Lyons, with a Y, was found lying in St. George's Road, Southwark. A short time previously, the deceased, uh, a first officer of Aberdeen Shipping was seen being led in the direction where the body was found by two women and a man. The body has been robbed, uh, even to, sorry, uh, even two gold earrings which the man had been observed to have been wearing. That's kind of funny. Uh, two women of ill fame and a man described as a laborer, but known to be the associate of bad characters, have been taken into custody on suspicion of having caused the sailor's death. There were no wounds on the body, and it is supposed that an overdose of some drug had been administered. Okay. So. So I guess the him being a sailor explains why he was wearing gold earrings. Uh... Let's talk to the inspector. Oh, no. What do you want? I thought I was going to have a nice, quiet day. Somebody has asked us to check today's times, and I was wondering if you'd be so kind as to tell me what you know about the mysterious deaths in the Southeast. There's nothing mysterious about it. The culprits are in custody at Old Bailey. The victim's body is at Fox. And what about the murdered lions? What of them? What did you find at the scene of the crime? Holmes wants me to record it precisely. What did I find? Two lions shot a number of times, lying on top of one another. Wagon tracks leading away from the bodies. Footprints in the dark grass. How many footprints, Inspector? Oh, who knows? I, I believe there were two sets of boot prints, if you want to get specific. They entered and exited from the wagons. 
Now, will that do it for your Mr. Holmes, Dr. Watson? Nearly. And what became of the wagon? Surely Holmes will want to know that. <sighs> Abandoned in Archbishop's Park. I had a man drive it over to our central carriage stables, largely so that someone could look after the horses. Any motives for the murder? Unfortunately, I, uh, I haven't a clue. <laughs> That's a bad inspector. He's so pissy that someone would want, like, actual information. Uh, is, is anyone working on a theory yet? I don't feel like we've gotten uh, any particularly juicy clues. I mean, I do agree with Jay that those two women are guilty of something. No, not my tax dollars. Uh, where was the bar where they found the guy's body? Uh... It says here that... Lions are not only native to Africa, but also to parts of Persia, Mesopotamia, and India. The image of the lion is used to symbolize the power of Britain. But of course, we knew that already, didn't we, Holmes? Indeed, Watson. Indeed. Uh, I don't know. Um, there was an... Oh, that, okay. Okay, so you're starting to work on something. Uh, one of the guys that we were introduced to in, like, the overview introduction, uh, they'd mentioned a bar. I can't remember the name of it. They kind of blew past the name. Uh, I'm hoping that we'll kind of figure out that through this uh, this kind of general inquiry here. Lions. The beasts or the dead chap? The dead chap they found down on St. George's Road. Now that's a lion I've seen. What do you suppose was the cause of death? For once I believe the papers had it right. It was a drug. Some sort of poison. What sort of drug? I don't know. It affected the respiratory system. His lips and fingertips were quite blue, but his eyes had a distinct yellow tint. I'm afraid I've never seen anything like it before. Something rather exotic, I should imagine. Well, definitely, you know, if he was at a bar, it'd be easy to give him a, a, a drink laced with something. Yeah, <laughs> they, they didn't have very many sets. Uh, to be to be working with um are we on uh, hr murray now I, I, I believe this is the next one on the list why hr whatever are you doing uh, going home whitson going home going home i was hoping you could answer a question about the mysterious death of stephen lyons lyons Ah, yes, eight, nine, six. No real evidence for that one. Just some clothes. No personal effects. Clothing undamaged. But traces of sea salt indicating he may have been a sailor. Well, that's about it. Now, if you excuse me, I'm off. Ta-ta. Ta-ta. And do say hello to your friend Mr. Helms for me, will you, old chap? Was that supposed to be comedy? Is that why they played that music? <laughs> well, we already knew he was a sailor. That, that didn't seem to be much use at all. Oh, I keep forgetting that we have to click on this to go visit. Let me have a look at this list. Of all of these people, Thomas O'Neill is the only name that rings a bell. He was a suspect in several jewel robberies, but he was never convicted. I see. What was that name, Thomas O'Neill? And so, 
was O'Neill the guy that we talked to at the police station? Well, Watson, it seems that old Langdale is at home with the raging case of the sniffles. Perhaps we should call on him there. No, I dare say we'll all be better off if we leave him alone with his tissues and his mustard plaster. Okay. Okay, okay. So, no help from... Langdale Pike. What about Porky Shinwell? Is he the guy who's always hanging out at the bar? Don't know a thing about them jungle type lions, but I might be able to help you out with Stephen Lyons. Well, how so, Shinwell? Did you know him? Well, he came in here from time to time whenever his ship was in port. Friend of mine up at Pentonville knew his brother, says the two of them were lock pickers of the ace variety. Anyways, just yesterday afternoon, Stephen Lyons comes in here with some redheaded fella. About an hour after Lyons left, in comes Derek Quinn, and he struts right over to this redheaded bloke. Who might Derek Quinn be? Don't know, sir. But I've never liked the looks of him, I haven't. What about Thomas O'Neill? Do you know anything about him? I don't believe I've ever met him. But from what I hear about the bloke, I'm surprised I didn't run into him in the slammer. What have you heard? This is only rumor, mind you. But he's suspected of every jewel theft from here to Timbuktu. And they says he'd two-time you in the wink of an eye if it had lined his pockets. The thing is, though, like, if O'Neill was a, a talented uh, jewel thief, why would he get mixed up in some petty robbery of, of Lion? I mean, unless he just wanted him dead, but... It appears that Barry and Thomas O'Neill are the sons of Carol and Olivia O'Neill. Very observant, Watson. It was nothing, Holmes. It appears that Barry and Thomas O'Neill are the sons of Carol and Olivia O'Neill. Very observant, Watson. It was nothing, Holmes. Okay. Yeah, really good names. Okay, so this was, like, that's the end of the questioning of the, uh, what are they called, the, the Baker Street regulars. Um, I believe... Oh my god. How the hell are... Is this like a whole freaking... Can we just call these people? I was wondering if you could tell me anything about the death of your son's lions. Oh, I wish we could. You know, Barry has traveled all over the world. And to think it would happen right here in London. You've traveled with him, haven't you, Mrs. O'Neill? Yes, I did. For all five years of our marriage. But I must say, I'm getting a bit weary of it. I mean, really, Mr. Holmes, it's no life for a married man to go traipsing all around the world. Of course it isn't. He should settle down and raise a family. My husband, Carol, could get Barry a job down at Rogers and Singer. Before I die, it would be nice to have one of my boys right nearby. Where is your other son? Last we heard, Thomas was in Oldenburg, 
of Germany. Germany? Royce Late Show just finished a tour of Germany, did it not? Yes, it did. Tell me, did you happen to see your brother-in-law while you were there? I certainly did not. But my husband might have. I can't really say for sure. You see, we don't talk about Thomas much. I don't mean to pry, but may I ask why? Oh, it's nothing really. You see, years ago, Thomas loaned Barry some money when he was trying to put together his animal show. And now Thomas believes that Barry is forever in his debt. Animal show? Okay, um, I wonder, okay, so, so, okay. So let's check out the the O'Neills again. Is it is it Barry O'Neill that is the one that was uh, in jail? Huh. Okay. Oh, Barry O'Neill well-known lion tamer who travels with Roy Slade's wild animal show. Okay. It's actually hard. <laughs> Let's look up Thomas O'Neill. Thomas O'Neill, the often accused but never convicted jewelry thief. After several significant burglaries, both in London and on the continent, it was said that a red-haired man was seen fleeing the scene, which is one of the reasons O'Neill was under suspicion. Okay, so Thomas... Uh, let's look at Derek Quinn. So I'm guessing Thomas O'Neill is the man. It wasn't so easy to tell in the FMV that uh, Thomas O'Neill, the guy who was in jail or being held for the in suspicion of this, was the red-haired man. So that's the red-haired man that Lyon was seen with at the pub, and Derek Quinn questioned him. Tell me if, I, if I'm totally off base here. Uh, Q... Quinn, Derek. Derek Quinn. Mr. Quinn is the proprietor of Vipers Unlimited. He claims that his toxins are mild and intended as health tonics. However, I suspect he sells venom from, for darker purposes. Okay. So that's a clue. He deals in toxins. Hope you guys are taking notes. <laughs> uh, let's see if the, the newsboys have anything. We tried. We really did. But they just wouldn't answer the door. Okay. Can we go see Derek Quinn? What did you learn, Watson? Not a thing, Holmes. You learned nothing? Don't get testy, Holmes. There wasn't anyone about. My humble apologies, Watson. <laughs> okay. So, going to see Derek Quinn didn't, uh, didn't provide any information. Um, let's go back to O'Neill real quick. Uh, I guess both O'Neills, just since... You know, while we're at it. Can we directly go to them? Pity. It appears that no one is in. However, can you tell, Holmes? 
There is a sign on the door that says, we are gone for the day. How terribly observant, Holmes. Elementary, my dear Watson. Fuck off. <laughs> like, why not just not have the, the icon highlighted so that we don't have to watch a video for that? Okay, one more O'Neill. And I think we're done with the O'Neills for now. Uh, Barry. Let's go see Barry O'Neill directly. All this way and not a clue to help us solve this case. How terribly disappointing. Okay. Let's check the times. This is the uh, the day that we're actually looking at. Oh my God. Okay, never mind. We're not we're not gonna read this stuff on the screen. Um, so if anyone wants to question someone, go ahead and give a shout out. I'm going to check the times real quick for uh, something that might be of use. I'm just going to skim through it. Oh, here's something. Roy Slade's wild African extravaganza opening tonight. Mr. Slade's celebrated spectacle returns from Wilmshaven with horses, elephants, lions, clowns, and performers of all description. O'Neill, the great lion tamer, at each performance. Mr. O'Neill will give his marvelous exhibition with his full-grown lions, the most daring performances ever witnessed, daily at three at Hengler's Circus. Okay, let's go talk to Slade. How about that? Oh, wow. Okay, so... Slade. Nope. So, let's, uh... This is, it, it was Aberdeen Navigation that, uh, um, that line was working for, right? Okay. Stephen Lyons has been on board for about two years now. To tell you the truth, I had just begun to look into irregularities in his paperwork. What prompted you to do that? It seems like some things started disappearing from behind locked doors. Never found any of it. But when I asked him about it, he was rather evasive. My, that sounds incriminating. But more than that, I had reason to believe that he carried unassigned cargo for his own profit. What sort of cargo, Mr. Reason? Everything, from horse collars to gems to French perfumes. When did you discover this? Following our recent passage on the Rhine. Well, that was interesting. Um... Maybe we could call it Hengler's. Hengler's is the venue where the circus was going to be at. Um. So it'd be in the H's. Hengler's Circus. Bye. 
What can I do for you two hombres? We're investigating last night's murder of the two lions in Hyde Park. Oh, now that was something. I'm telling you, I've been from the Pecos to the Pampas, from the Sierra to the Sahara, and I never would have thought I'd have two of my lions killed in the capital city of the civilized world. Oh, my. Then the lions were yours, Mr. Slade. Well, in a manner of speaking, they were with the show. Barry O'Neill actually owned them, poor compadre. He's laid up in St. Thomas Hospital with a busted leg. He was helping on board the ship yesterday when a crate fell smack on him. You'd be laid up for some time, poor fella. For me, his cats kind of made my show. Do you know how he acquired the cats? Oh, he caught him himself in Africa with his bare hands. Probably the only hands that ever handled those cats. I'm telling you, they take your head off as soon as look at you. So no one else could safely get close to the lions? Well, there's Barry's wife. She's traveling with the show, too. Well, she's in the act, but just uh, window dressing, if you know what I mean. Uh, I hear she's staying with Barry's folks here in London. Okay. Hangler Circus. Is there any dirt? Hangler Circus hires a variety of circus acts. Lately, it appears that they were quite fond of booking Wild West shows from the States. Okay. Fun loving sport this slate is. While we were helping him feed the elephants, he asked if we had any experience as lion tamers. Oh! That is quite an accusation there, Jay Pullman. Uh, do you remember what the name of uh, uh, Barry's wife was? Um. Okay, so Barry O'Neill... Mary, okay. Can we talk to her directly? No. Okay. That's that's a pretty that's a pretty interesting jump. Okay. So So let me get this straight. Barry was a is a lion tamer working for Slade for Slade's company. Then what's the connection with Then what's the connection with Lion? Yeah, yeah, we 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 talked to her just a little bit. But now I'm starting to forget what the hell Lion was doing in this whole thing. Lion was, sh was smuggling in contraband with Aberdeen Shipping Company. Okay. <sighs> Okay. So who do we question next? Oh, no. What do you want? I thought I was going to have a nice, quiet day. Somebody has asked us to check today's times, and I was wondering if you'd be so kind as to tell me what you know about the mysterious deaths in the Southeast. There's nothing mysterious about it. 
The culprits are in custody at Old Bailey. The victim's body is at Fox. And what about the murdered lions? What of them? What did you find at the scene of the crime? Holmes wants me to record precisely. What okay. did I find? Two lions shot a number of times, lying on top of one another. Wagon tracks leading away from the bodies. Footprints in the dark grass. How many footprints, Inspector? Oh, who knows? I, I believe there were two sets of boot prints, if you want to get specific. They entered and exited from the wagons. Now, will that do it for your Mr. Holmes, Dr. Watson? Nearly. And what became of the wagon? Surely Holmes will want to know that. <sighs> Abandoned in Archbishop's Park. I had a man drive it over to our central carriage stables, largely so that someone could look after the horses. Any motives for the murder? Unfortunately, I, uh, I haven't a clue. Okay. That's right. So... Uh, I didn't know it was going to replay that when we went to um, Scotland Yard. St. Thomas's. Mr. O'Neill, Dr. John Watson, may I speak with you for a moment? What about? Your lions. We're investigating their murder. Oh, you're from the police? No, I'm working with Sherlock Holmes. The lions were yours, were they not? Yes. And such good lads, both of them. Lenny and Bruce. We've been together so long. I don't know what I shall do without them. Do you have any notion who would want your lions dead? Uh, no, not really. I can't quite imagine who would... Oh, two innocent lions. There, there, Mr. O'Neill. <laughs> I assure you, Mr. Holmes and I will get to the bottom of this. Um... Okay, so that seemed like there was absolutely no useful information there. Except maybe the names of the lions? Mr. O'Neill, Dr. John Watson, may I speak with you for a moment? What about? Your lions. We're investigating their murder. Oh, you're from the police? No, I'm working with Sherlock Holmes. The lions were yours, were they not? Yes. And such good lads, both of them. Lenny and Bruce. We've been together so long. I don't know what I shall do without them. Do you have any notion who would want your lions dead? Okay. Lenny and Bruce, I don't know if that's going to amount to anything at all. <laughs> yes, yes, he's lying. Um, I don't imagine there's going to be any... Um, extra information on just the hospital. Okay. <laughs> uh, so the hospital was engulfed in a scandal where several of its doctors mistakenly removed the incorrect organs from a number of patients. That's kind of funny. They wouldn't let us near O'Neill's room. Okay. So we can't search the directory by first name, so Lenny and Bruce aren't going to be helpful. But maybe we could go to Archbishop's Park? and investigate the scene ourselves. I question why we have come to this location. If clues are what we are seeking, then we are in the wrong place altogether. Well, that's where the, the wagon was abandoned. Um, okay, let's go to Hyde Park, because that's where the lions were actually shot. Yeah, please, if anyone's got an idea of, uh, you know, just where we're going to go and investigate stuff, sh shout it out. I question why we have come to this location. If clues are what we are seeking, then we are in... What are you talking about? The lions were shot in Hyde Park. Um, 
Well, there's a taxidermist in town. Underhill. Bilbo Underhill. What the fuck? Bilbo Underhill? That's amazing. What did you learn, Watson? Not a thing. Okay. I mean, it seems pretty unlikely that the taxidermist would, uh, would want those lions shot. But, I mean, his name was mentioned in... Oh, oh, was it was it two? Yeah, okay. Uh, maybe there's some sneaky. Oh, he's got the lions and he's ready to stuff them. Well, that's interesting. Okay. Oh, um, here, let me give you guys something to read on the, uh, from the Times. I believe it's this article. Oh, what? Is there no way to scroll this? Oh, that sucks. Okay, so yeah, I guess we can't scroll. Oh yeah, we can't, okay. Surely the time has come to grant home rule to Ireland. Uh, to... <clears throat> To let Irish people out from under the heavy paw of the British lion. After decades of violence, we should realize that continued resistance to an idea whose time has come can only result in more violence. Boycotts and assassinations will not cease through an endless progression of acts of coercion, land, or... I don't understand what this means. We can only hope that the lion will soon release its prey. A prey which would certainly prove more valuable if not completely devoured. I am, sir, your obedient servant, Durkin Toper. Um, yeah, is it possible for you guys to read this? Okay, well, let's go. To, let's let's look up Mr. Toper. Mr. Topper, I am curious about the coincidence of your letter to the editor and the murder of two lions in Hyde Park. I assure you that while the symbolism of the act does not escape me, I abhor any sort of violence and am quite capable of making my point by other means. I'm a firm believer that the pen is mightier than the sword. Okay.
Okay, so so Mr. Topper is an avid Irish nationalist, treasurer of the Irish Social Club. Maybe we're starting to get somewhere here. Okay. Um. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I forgot the name of the uh, the Irish party. Irish Social Club. I wonder if that's in the directory. Irish Social Club. Let's go there. Sorry, Holmes. No information here. But let's not dawdle, Watson. There's work to be done. I mean, this could be a total red herring. Uh, but... Uh, H.I. Irish Social Club. Okay, it's deserted down at the Irish Social Club. Sorry, I'm just checking the times to see if anything, uh... If anything looks interesting. Uh... I guess here, let's, uh... Let's just give you guys something to, to read while I'm reading. Uh... Oh. Okay, maybe this isn't worthless after all. <clears throat> A crowded home rule meeting was held at St. George's Hall uh, in Kendall yesterday evening. Mr. T.P. O'Connor, MP, speaking in support of a resolution expressing unabated confidence in the is that remedial Irish policy advocated by Mr. Gladstone. I'm going to read it out of the Times just because it's a little hard to read the, the way it's written there. Uh, policy advocated by Mr. Gladstone said it was a singular fact that the Tories and liberal unionists made very much of the charges brought by the Times against the Irish party so long as the latter took no notice of them, but that immediately the party showed the least intention of meeting the charges and put them to rest of, oh, and put them to the test of proof their opponents found their courage oozing out of their fingers' ends. As soon as the Irish party had an opportunity of proving that the charges were false, 
the whole tone of the unionists charged oh the, the whole tone of the unionists changed and they declared that the charges were unimportant with reference to the cry that home rule would lead to separation he said that the irish leaders had pledged themselves to a candid honest acceptance of mr gladstone's policy which provided for a subordinate parliament i don't fucking know no i'm not reading anything in a bad accent <laughs> okay so So this seems kind of interesting. O'Reilly? Do you mean Bill O'Reilly? <laughs> um, okay, so let's let's talk to Mr. Gladstone and Mr. T.P. O'Connor. Swervin Irvin, what's up, dude? Um... T.P. O'Connor. Uh, who? The suspected gem thief. Is that is that Thomas O'Neill? Okay, sure. Let's let's talk to him. It appears that they've just left. There are fresh footsteps retreating from the front door. But look, Holmes, there are also some coming towards the door. Terribly observant, Watson. However, the prints you are looking at belong to us. I like that they can see footprints on a sidewalk. <laughs> um, okay. Interesting. Thomas O'Neill, the, uh, the gem thief. Oh, sorry. O'Neill. Thomas. Okay. So, we wanted to talk to Gladstone. I mean, I might be totally off base with all of this, uh, all this Irish nationalist stuff, but uh, it doesn't say which Gladstone. I guess we could find out uh, this way. Notorious ladies man? No. Is it Gladstone FM? No. Is it Gladstone WE? Ah. I've rung the bell a half dozen times and no one has come to the door. Really, Watson? Next time I would appreciate it if you would thoroughly research your leads before you ask me to come along. It could be, but I mean they've they've given us a lot of information on um on this whole irish nationalist stuff <sighs> okay 
Okay, so so who was it that worked with the poisons? Derek Quinn. So yeah, I mean we know that Derek Quinn uh, was involved with poisons. The only problem is is that that kind of led to a dead end. Um, Oh, look, there is a note on the door that says that they will be out all afternoon. It appears we have wasted our time. Excellent deduction, Watson. You're finally learning. Well, maybe we can talk to those ladies some more. Does anyone remember the name of the ladies? Like those... Uh... We don't know much. Okay, so there was an accident on the docks. Barry O'Neill, line tamer for Roy Slade's wild African extravaganza, was injured as the show was being unloaded at the London docks. It is unfortunate that the spectacle, which will be at Hangler's Circus for three weeks, will be open tonight without one of its top build acts. Mr. S Slade assured us, however, that the show will be buzzing with excitement as always. Um... So, Lyons, Stephen Lyons, nothing on file, oh, the bloke owned the landlady two months back rent, but was promising to pay six months in advance next week. Guess he was expecting the ship to come in. Okay. I don't think we can visit him considering he's dead. Lion's landlady says he's dead. We already know that, Watson. Did you find out anything else? He owed her two months back rent, but he told her he'd be paying up plus several months in advance come Tuesday. I don't know the name of his landlady, though. Uh, hmm. Okay, so let's go back to these guys. Uh... Okay, so Stevie says, so that guy seems pretty shady. In these types of mysteries, the guy that gets killed after saying he's expecting money to come in usually has a greedy partner. What did Lyons have access to that he suspected would get him rich? Yeah, I know. 
Um, Mr. Ellis has not yet returned from his assignment in Europe. Okay, so that was nothing. Um, I'm going to try to find the interview with the, uh, the ladies that Lyons was in the bar with, just because I don't remember their names. I'd like to look them up individually. Uh, it was one of these videos. The victim, Stephen Lyons, was last seen in the company of Sylvia Carpenter, Marcy Edwards, and Collier Eddy at the Red Bull Inn. It was a simple matter for the police to identify and apprehend them. Would you like to talk to them? Yes, thank you. Tell me, Miss Carpenter, what happened last evening? He just dropped down dead. He did. I done nothing to him. I swear it. The victim, Stephen Lyons, was last seen in the company of Sylvia Carpenter, Marcy Edwards, and Collier Eddy at the Red Bull Inn. It was a simple matter for the police to identify and apprehend them. Would you like to talk to them? Yes, thank you. Okay. So we have some more names. So, Sylvia Carpenter. Does she have a file? Nothing on file. Mum's the word for Miss Carpenter's landlady. She says she makes it a point not to poke her nose into the business of others. If we followed that advice, we'd never get anywhere, would we, Watson? <laughs> Thanks. Thanks for that. Okay. Uh, okay, so Collier Eddie. I ain't seen either or air of Collier Eddie today, but I can assure you he's pretty much on the up and up. Oh, he's a proper gentleman then. No, I wouldn't be going that far, mate. He's fond of his gin, and he's not the bug sporting with the ladies, if you know what I mean. I'm quite sure I do. You catch Eddie on an off day, he can be a cantankerous sock. Seen him bust up a book or two with the professors. Okay. Um, I tried to talk to the taxidermist and couldn't get any information. You're a little behind the times, Stevie. Uh, Collier Eddie, nothing on file. And isn't he the book in the slammer? Well, yeah, I he is. I'm just trying to see if we can get some more information, guys. And then someone named Edwards. Uh, I don't remember the first name. Uh, Marcy. Marcy Edwards. Porky Cinema. So, so are you familiar with the names of all these people? That Marcy Edwards. Never liked her. Never liked them blokes she brought round neither. In fact, I packed her off this morning, threw her out on her cheap bottom. Don't know where she went. Don't care neither. Yeah, he had, he had good information. Uh... I'm just hoping that like if we if we kind of investigate a little bit of background on like all of these various people that Lyons was in a um that that we knew he was around with that maybe someone will bring up something of use.
Okay, and then let's check out the Red Bull Inn. Uh, like, I'm just tracing any any word that gets mentioned. I'm just trying to follow it all the way through and see if we can figure anything out. Stephen Lyons, he was a first officer for Aberdeen Navigation on the SS Trueheart, <laughs> but he was always talking about buying his own ferry boat. He was in here just last night. Was anyone with him? He came in with a red-headed bloke, but the fella left after just that one drink. <laughs> then Lyons has a drink with Wally Sharp, who comes in now and then. Sharp left, and Lyons spots Sylvia Carpenter and that Marcy Edwards, who was sitting with one of their regular customers, Collier Eddy. So Lyons goes over there, <laughs> staggers over if you want to know the truth, or we hadn't had but a couple of drinks. I've seen him put quite a bit away at other times without ever showing a sign. So he goes over there, sits down, they get all friendly-like, and then they all left together. Okay, who the fuck is Wally Sharp? That's that's a pretty big clue. I mean, it seems like Wally Sharp went ahead and uh, gave him a poison. Wow, okay. Maybe we were wasting our time with all this Irish stuff. Uh, all right, Red Bull Inn. What do you guys got for me? Okay. Yes. He was pretty clearly poisoned before that. I think we need to talk to Wally Sharp. Or, sorry, Wallace. Oh. Okay. So they work together. Let's go talk to Wally Sharp. Captain Sharp, how well did you know Stephen Lyons? He was my first officer. Fact is, we didn't get on too well. He didn't like taking orders. Always talked about having his own ship someday. But Aberdeen's doesn't pay much, so where would a man like him get his hands on that kind of money? When did you see him last? Well, last night at the Red Bull, we had a drink together. Hmm. Okay. That doesn't help much. Okay. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to check the times now that we have a couple more names. If anyone has any ideas, feel free to shout them out. Turnbull. Um, it 
Ebenezer Turnbull. Uh, so the only reason why I'm looking into this guy is because uh, he's involved with excavations in Egypt you know jewels might come from an excavation I don't know it's just it was in the paper so it's probably nothing I can't believe we came all this way when there are more important things to pursue indeed Holmes I don't know what got into us okay probably totally unimportant So I don't know, I'm trying to find if there's any reference to people selling stolen goods so we could figure out where people would be fencing items. Uh, Mallory Keenan was speaking at the uh, Irish Nationalist meeting. Mallory Keenan. Uh, okay, so Jay Pullman says, so the one captain was complaining about stuff going missing from his ship. Uh, we have a suspected thief. We have Lyons who thought he was going to be coming into some big money and another captain who knew Lyons uh, could have helped fence stolen goods. Where does that leave us? I don't know. And so I thought that the the one guy from the shipping company who was upset wasn't that there was stolen goods. It was that there was contraband, right? Like I don't think Watson did it. <laughs> uh, I'm probably wasting my time with these Irish guys, but you know, let's just hear what this person has to say. What did you learn, Watson? Not a thing, Holmes. You learned nothing. Okay. No use there. Barry O'Neill Um Yeah, Barry's in the hospital. Right? Oh. No, Thomas O'Neill's the one who's supposed to be in uh, Germany, right? Okay, no, so, so Thomas O'Neill is the one who... is in jail. Alright. Pity. It appears that no one is in. However, can you tell, Holmes? There is a sign on the door that says, we are gone for the day. How terribly observant, Holmes. Elementary, my dear Watson. Right? So Thomas O'Neill is the one who was picked up by the cops with the ladies, right? He was the red-haired man. Barry O'Neill is the one who is in the hospital crying about his... Frickin' lions, right? Yeah, so we talked to him and he's in, uh, he's in the hospital.
Let's talk to the, the wife again. Uh, I, I feel like I wasn't paying close enough attention when we made this visit. I was wondering if you could tell me anything about the death of your son's lion. Oh, I wish we could. You know, Barry has traveled all over the world. And to think it would happen right here in London. You've traveled with him, haven't you, Mrs. O'Neill? Yes, I did. For all five years of our marriage. But I must say, I'm getting a bit weary of it. I mean, really, Mr. Holmes, it's no life for a married man to go traipsing all around the world. Of course it isn't. He should settle down and raise a family. My husband, Carol, could get Barry a job down at Rogers and Singer. Before I die, it would be nice to have one of my boys right nearby. Where is your other son? Last we heard, Thomas was in Oldenburg, Germany. Germany? Roy Slate Show just finished a tour of Germany, did it not? Yes, it did. Tell me, did you happen to see your brother-in-law while you were there? I certainly did not. But my husband might have. I can't really say for sure. You see, we don't talk about Thomas much. I don't mean to pry, but may I ask why? Oh, it's nothing really. You see, years ago, Thomas loaned Barry some money when he was trying to put together his animal show. And now Thomas believes that Barry is forever in his debt. Uh -huh. I don't know if there's any way for us to investigate Germany, although we know that Roy Slade did a tour there with his show. So... What did you learn, Watson? Not a thing, Holmes. You learned nothing? Don't get testy, Holmes. There wasn't anyone about. My humble apologies, Watson. <sighs> we're, I feel like we're just missing some important... some important thing. Yeah, the contraband, I don't know. So we can't look at Slade on his own. Roy Slade. Oh, HR, whatever are you doing? Uh, going home, Whitson, going home. Going home? I was hoping you could answer a question about the mysterious death of Stephen Lyons. Lyons! Ah, yes, 896. 
no real evidence for that one. Just some clothes. No personal effects. Clothing undamaged. But traces of sea salt indicating he may have been a sailor. Well, that's about it. Now, if you excuse me, I'm off. Ta-ta! Ta-ta? And do say hello to your friend Mr. Helms for me, will you, old chap? I mean, we could just try to pin it on Thomas O'Neill, but like we don't really have like it sucks that like, you know, we can kind of come up with an idea of what might have happened, but like there's not any actual incriminating evidence. Who was it that gave us the interview? Well, I think that the girls had nothing to do with it. The guy who was being held, like the O'Neill that was being held, I don't think had anything to do with it. Don't know a thing about them jungle-type lions, but I might be able to help you out with Stephen Lyons. Well, how so, Shinwell? Did you know him? Well, he came in here from time to time whenever his ship was in port. A friend of mine up at Pentonville knew his brother. Says the two of them were lock pickers of the ace variety. Anyways, just yesterday afternoon, Stephen Lyons comes in here with some red-headed fella. About an hour after Lyons left, in comes Derek Quinn, and he struts right over to this red-headed bloke. Who might Derek Quinn be? Don't know, sir. But I've never liked the looks of him, I haven't. What about Thomas O'Neill? Do you know anything about him? I don't believe I've ever met him. But from what I hear about the bloke, I'm surprised I didn't run into him in the slammer. What have you heard? It's only rumor, mind you. But he's suspected of every jewel theft from here to Timbuktu. And they says he'd two-time you in the wink of an eye if it'd line his pockets. <clears throat> but don't you think that we're being really led towards thinking it was Thomas O'Neill? Like, that seems a little obvious. And so, wait, wait, then would... But then why do they kill lions? Because he had... He had smuggled in some contraband, and they wanted to just get him out of the... Uh, 
Like, they didn't want to give him a cut of it. They wanted to take his shit and fence it themselves. So that means that Lions just kind of got caught up in this deal. Well, I thought we knew that. Didn't we talk to... Uh... Um... Wasn't it Wally Sharp? Uh... No, who was the... Someone gave us a really good uh, breakdown of the timeline at the bar. Stephen Lyons. He was a first officer for Aberdeen Navigation on the SS Trueheart. <laughs> but he was always talking about buying his own ferry boat. He was in here just last night. Was anyone with him? He came in with a red-headed bloke. But the fella left after just that one drink. <laughs> then Lyons has a drink with Wally Sharp, who comes in now and then. Sharp left, and Lyons spots Sylvia Carpenter and that Marcy Edwards, who was sitting with one of their regular customers, Collier Eddy. So Lyons goes over there, <laughs> staggers over if you want to know the truth, or we hadn't had but a couple of drinks. I've seen him put quite a bit away at other times without ever showing a sign. So he goes over there, sits down, they get all friendly-like, and then they all left together. Okay, so let's get this straight. Thomas O'Neill and Lyons are at the bar together, yeah? Then Thomas leaves and Wally Sharp comes up, right? Oh, they walk in together. <clears throat> now, I forget exactly what the relationship was with Wally Sharp. Uh... Oh, he was a captain, but he didn't like Lions, right? Because he was always talking about leaving. Captain Sharp, how well did you know Stephen Lyons? He was my first officer. Fact is, we didn't get on too well. He didn't like taking orders. Always talked about having his own ship someday. But Aberdeen's doesn't pay much, so where would a man like him get his hands on that kind of money? When did you see him last? The last night at the Red Bull, we had a drink together. Okay. So, then the question is, did Thomas poison him, or did Wally Sharp poison him? And then, is there any way to connect either Thomas O'Neill or Wally Sharp with um, Derek Quinn, who would have been the guy who would have gotten him the poison? Yeah, yeah, okay, so, so, Jay, you're following along. Quinn is the really hard part. Because no one seems to have been in much direct contact with Quinn.
Oh, let's go to Vipers Unlimited. Jesus. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. We, 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 we missed a name. We might be able to find Quinn at Vipers Unlimited. Fuck. Uh-oh. They had absolutely no information pertaining to this case. I thought not, Watson. It appears that we wasted our time. Fuck you. We did not waste our time. This guy sold the poison. Okay, 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 okay. I, th I think we're starting to, starting to put together the timeline. Uh... Porky, 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 Porky Shinwell. Let's watch this again. Don't know a thing about them jungle type lions, but I might be able to help you out with Stephen Lions. Well, how so, Shinwell? Did you know him? Well, he came in here from time to time whenever his ship was in port. Friend of mine up at Pentonville knew his brother, says the two of them were lock pickers of the ace variety. Anyways, just yesterday afternoon, Stephen Lyons comes in here with some redheaded fella. About an hour after Lyons left, in comes Derek Quinn, and he struts right over to this redheaded bloke. Who might Derek Quinn be? Don't know, sir. But I've never liked the looks of him, I haven't. What about Thomas O'Neill? Do you know anything about him? I don't believe I've ever met him. But from what I hear about the bloke, I'm surprised I didn't run into him in the slammer. What have you heard? This is only rumor, mind you. But he's suspected of every jewel theft from here to Timbuktu. And they says he'd two-time you in the wink of an eye if it'd line his pockets. Okay, but... But... Porky says that he doesn't know Thomas O'Neill. I mean, it's true that he just said redheaded bloke, so he might not have recognized him, but if he knew the name of Thomas O'Neill, at some point, whoever he, he learned the name from might have pointed him out, right? Yeah, yeah. So, so everything is pointing at Thomas. My only problem is that in that situation there, like, you know, they made it pretty clear that the bartender Who? Did who So, so Porky just said that he didn't know Thomas O'Neill. He thought that he would have run into him in the slammer because he had a reputation for being a thief. Well, isn't, isn't that what... what... Okay. Oh. Okay, so So Thomas was was in his bar and he didn't even know it. Okay, okay. So I think my only problem with pinning it all on Thomas O'Neill is terribly sorry it seems you need to turn up a clue or so more before the case can be judged please do continue oh
how do we uh uh how how do we make clues? Oh, wait, so do we go to, hold on. Oh, whoops, <laughs> I went looking for Thomas. L, M, N, O, okay. So, Central Carriage Stables? Oh. Well, that's where they said that they took the, the carriage that went away from the lions. So, like, I went to the park looking for the lions. I went to the place where the carriage was supposedly found, but I haven't gone to the place where the carriage was taken after that. Did the dispatcher show you the wagon, Holmes? Not only did he show it to me, it revealed some very interesting clues. Oh, do tell. The wagon housed a cage, which, of course, was no surprise. The door was wide open. I found that the padlock had been sprung, left a dangle on the ring bolt. Blood was smeared all over the stairs leading in and all over the floor inside. Oh, how perfectly nauseating. It was. But what interested me even more was what lay in the corner of the cage. What was it? Two large leather collars. Attached to the end of each collar was a leather pouch. Both pouches had been ripped open and emptied. What do you suppose it adds up to? Time will tell, Watson. Time will tell. Okay, well... <sighs> Pouches around the collars... Oh, wait a minute. So... Was the lion tamer smuggling stolen goods? in in the pouches around the lion tamers or around the lion's necks hear ye hear ye the queen's court stands in order Pleasure to see you again. So it's the murder of the lion you're investigating, isn't it? Excellent. But first things first. Tell me, who murdered those unfortunate beasts? Uh, remember, you're to choose either from your notebook or the directory. Okay. So the lions themselves, like we think we know who poisoned Mr. Lions. We didn't really figure out who shot the lions themselves unless it was his brother who shot his own lions, which was, uh, yeah, so, so you think Barry shot his own lions. Is that is that our uh, is that the consensus here, guys? I mean, I know that there hasn't been very convincing convincing acting all around, but Barry seemed particularly uh, like unmoved by the death of his lions. Okay, well, Jay, if, if, if you think it's Barry, 
then then let's convince Steven. Like, why why do you think it's Barry that that shot his own lions? Oh, well, that's true. They did say that, like, no one... Yeah. Yeah. So Thomas is the criminal. Okay. We know Thomas like bought the poison. <laughs> right? This is hard. Okay. Well, Thomas O'Neill is pretty clearly the guy who killed uh, Mr. Lyons. Like, we know that he had access to the poison. We know that he saw him before then. We know that he uh, only became intoxicated after he met with, with Thomas. So we know that. All right, are we going with this? Uh, we're gonna vote Barry. Barry killed his own lions. No, I'm sorry. You've blundered badly on that one. Uh, return to the starting point immediately. Oh, fuck. Hear ye, hear ye. The Queen's Court stands in order. Okay, so... Well, okay. So, so may maybe they're not being as... 